purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to use the unit normal table in Appendix B of your textbook. This slide illustrates a portion of the unit normal table. Here we see at the top at the different columns A, B, C, and D. A is the Z score um, and when you are trying to find the proportions or probabilities specific for a particular z-score, you would transform the score into a z-score and enter the table using the z-column. For instance, again, based on what we learned in the last chapter, to transform an x-value into z-score, we would use the equation z is equal to x minus mu divided by standard deviation, or for example, z is equal to x minus M, let's draw that a little bit nicer, X minus M divided by S. So once you transform a score into a Z-score, you enter the table using column A and you locate your Z-score. Please note that all um, z-scores are reported two digits right at the decimal, so when you are computing a z-score, make sure you adhere to standard rounding rules. Then the next column here, B, represents proportion in the body, and over here we have an illustration of what that would look like. So if we were interested in the area or probability or proportion of a distribution below a positive z-score, again this would be positive because it's above the mean, we would um, sketch our distribution like this and transform the x value into z score and then report the area in column B which represents the proportion in the body, the larger area which will always be greater than a proportion of 0.5 or 50 percent. Now let's remember that the, a normal distribution is symmetrical so it's a mirrored image on one side um, as the other. So if we were to consider the opposite, so we could consider the body or the proportion or area above a negative z-score. So again, all of this would be shaded and it would be greater than 0.5 or 50 percent. Um, but again, this is pertaining to the area above a negative z-score or an x value below the mean. The next column, column C, is referred to as a proportion in the tail. So here we would be interested in the area above a positive z-score. So a value above a po positive z-score, which we tend to um, see as the smaller area or the smallest area of the distribution. Again, because the distribution is symmetrical, we would see the same on the left side. So area in the tail, area below a negative z-score. Again, the proportion or probability of a score that's less than the mean. And then finally we have the last column, column D, which is referred to as proportion between the mean and z. So we may be interested in the proportion or probability um, of scores between the mean and, and a z-score. Um, here it pertains to a positive z-score and we could consider the same, the area between the mean and the z, a negative z-score. So again, um, in the next couple slides I'll show you how to um, address the process or implement the process of finding proportions under the normal curve, beginning with transforming a score into z-score, entering the table using column A, after identifying the area of interest, then reporting the proportion in the, from the appropriate column B, C, or D. Okay, so here's an example of how you would find the proportions or probabilities for specific z-score values. So again, as I stated before, step one, we're going to sketch our distribution and shade the area of interest. Step two, transform an x value or values given whether or not we're looking between two positive z-scores or two negative z-scores. And we're going to transform those x values into z-scores using our equation. 
Step 3, enter the unit nor normal table using column A and reference the appropriate proportion, body, tail, or area between the mean and the Z according to the sketch drawn in Step 1. I can't stress enough how important it is to actually sketch your distribution. History shows that students that, that neglect that step tend to make very careless mistakes. So let's consider this example. A population is normally distributed with the mean of 45 and a standard deviation of 4. What is the probability of randomly selecting a score that is greater than 43? So first let's just identify the probability statement of interest. So what is the probability of randomly selecting an x value that's greater than a score of 43? Okay, let's take a look at what this looks like visually. So we have our normal distribution. We have the mean in the center of our distribution, which has uh, been identified as 45. We understand that um, the standard deviation is equal to 4, and we're interested in the score of 43, so the probability of randomly selecting a score that's greater than 43. So 43 would be less than 45, so it would be to the left. We're going to partition that area off, and given, again, our probably probability statement over here, greater than, we understand that to be interpreted visually as what is the probability selecting a score greater than 43 that so that pertains to this whole area of the normal distribution alright so according to to our steps we've sketched our distribution shared, shaded the area of interest next step would be to transform our x value into a z score so z is equal to x minus mu over standard deviation Z is equal to our score of interest, 43 minus 45 divided by our standard deviation equal to 4. So we get 43 minus 45, that's negative 2. And divide by 4, we get a Z score equal to negative 0.5. So again, as we've learned, we're just relabeling um, our x values and expressing them as standard deviation units, z scores. So a score of 43 is half a standard deviation unit below the mean. The mean becomes zero. Okay, so we can also rewrite our probability statement now that we know our z score. So we could transform this into the statement, what is the probability of randomly selecting a z score greater than negative 0 0.50. And again, our sketch here illustrates that it's the body that we're interested in. The body. Okay, so I'm going to flip a couple pages and um, bring us to the unit normal table so that we can identify the proportion or probability that is illustrated in this shaded area. Okay, so the area of interest that we've identified um, represents the body of the distribution for a negative z-score. So what we want to do is find that particular z-score. It was negative 0.5. What I want to point out, um, first of all, is that the z-scores, the distribution in our appendix B, simply includes positive z-scores. There isn't a need to have a whole other distribution of negative z-scores because it's a mere image, so it's symmetrical. So whatever distance we see on the positive side would be equal on the negative side. So again, we're not going to find negative 0.5. We're going to look for 0.5. And so here, again, I'm entering the table using my z-score in column A. And I look down this row, and I don't see... 0.5. I continue over here to this column A, which is a continuation, and move my way down, and it ends at 0.49, so I'm going to go to the next page. And here at the very top, I see that um, the z-score of 0 0.5, 0 0.5, z equal to 0.5, is represented there at the top of the page. And again, based on my sketch, I'll draw it again here. 
the sketch look like this where we had our mean and our score so mean of 45 and our score of 43 again rep recognizing that that's the body of the distribution that tells me that the column I'm interested in or the proportion displayed in column B is where I'd find my answer so here if you can see that again the body is represented by proportion point six nine one five okay so let's go back to our problem so back to our probability statement originally it said what is the probability of randomly selecting an x value that's greater than 43 we converted that into a probability statement relating to the z-score so what is the probability of a z selecting randomly selecting a z-score above negative 0.5 and we just found from our z distribution our unit normal table that that proportion is equal to 0.6915 and again um, another way to understand that is that we could think of it as there is a 69.15 percent chance 69.15 percent chance that we would randomly select a score greater than 43 in this distribution. So again, we're asked to find the the proportion, but again, we can interpret that as a probability uh, and, and express it as a percent. So 69.15% chance that that we, excuse me, we would randomly select a score greater than 43 given the parameters of a mean of 45 and the standard deviation equal to 4. For this process, we're going to find a particular score that corresponds to specific proportions or probabilities. So our first step is to identify the percent of interest and convert it into a proportion. So we may um, be asked to find the score that represents the top 15% of the distribution or we may be asked to find the score that represents the lowest 25% of the distribution so we're going to be solving for X but to to begin the process we must first identify that percent and convert it into a proportion by dividing that percent by 100 next step two is sketch the distribution and identify where the X value of interest would reside step three use the unit normal table to look up the corresponding z-score you must pay attention to whether it would be a negative or positive z-score based on the location of the x value of interest so above or below the mean step four transform the x value the z-score into an x value here's an example the u.s census 2005 reports that americans spend an average of 24.3 minutes commuting to work each day assuming that the distribution of commuting times is normal with a standard deviation of 10 minutes how much time do you have to spend commuting each day to be in the highest 10 percent nationwide so again step one says identify the percent of interest that would be 10 percent and we need to convert that 10 percent into a proportion so we divide that by 100 and we get 0.10 Next, let's sketch our distribution and identify where that this x value of interest interest would reside. So we have our mean in the center, which is represented by 24.3. And we identify that what we're interested in finding is what is x equal to? What is x equal to? That represents the top 10% of commuting times. So again, we're not going to shade anything because what we want to figure out is this x value down here. So again, what is x equal to? Question mark here that represents the cutoff of 10% of commuting time, the highest, I should clarify, the highest 10% of commuting time. 
So again, we've identified the proportion of interest. Because we're focusing on the highest, we recognize that it is the tail of interest here. Again, we're not shading an area because we're not looking for the proportion. We're trying to figure out what that x value equals. Nonetheless, we can use our understanding of what portion of this distribution right, is identified with this highest 10% verbiage. And again, we're going to use the tail. We're going to use the 0 0.10. And instead of using the Z column, column A, to enter the table, we're going to enter the col columns using the tail. And we're going to look for 0 0.10 or something closest to 0 0.10 to find the corresponding z-score. Okay, so here is our z-table. Again, we're not going to use column A to enter the distribution, the normal unit normal table. Instead, we're going to focus on column C. And what we're looking for, again, it was the top, the highest 10%. We converted that to a proportion of 0 0.10. So we're going to look for the proportion of 0 0.10 or 0 0.100. Um, to find the corresponding z-score. Again, our purpose right now is to find what z is equal to. And we're just going to make our way down this column. We don't see 0 0.10. Use column C over here, the continuation. We don't see it here. I'm going to go to the next page. Again, column C. We're looking for 0 0.10. Again, we're getting close. We're looking for the closest thing to 0.10. One zero. So we're going to come down here. We're getting closer, very close. And it looks like the closest value we come to is 0 0.1003. And again, our objective was to find the corresponding z-score. So the z-score that corresponds to that proportion, z equal to 1.28. 1.28. And that's the value we're going to need to use our equation to transform this z-score into an x value. So again, our unit normal table identified that the z-value was equal to 1.28. And so at this point, we can, um, again, re refer back to our steps. We're at step 3. Um, we've found the corresponding z-score. Again, we recognize that it's a, going to be a positive z-score because the score of interest is to the left of the mean. Please um, make sure that you recognize that it had, be, had we been looking for the lowest 10%, for instance, the x value over here, we would have recorded that as a negative z-score of 1.28. All right, so at this point we move on to step four, which says that now we can convert that x value into, excuse me, that z-score into an x value. So x is equal to the mu plus the product of our standard deviation multiplied by our z-score. We replace variables. x is equal to 24.3 plus the product of our standard deviation, which was equal to 10 times 1.28. x is equal to 24.3 plus 12.8. And we get x is equal to 37.1 minutes. Okay, so again, we can come over here and now identify that given what we've just calculated, someone who commutes 37, on average, 37.1 minutes um, to work each day represents the highest 10% of commuting times. So again, obviously, it's 37. 0.1 minute and greater, right, that would be above that um, marker that we just identified. But at minimum, at minimum, somebody needs to commute on average 37.1 minutes per um, to work each day to be um, considered in the top 10% of commuting times. So hopefully you see the difference in the process of um, whether we're going to identify the proportion or 
probability um, of scores or the proportion between scores, above scores, below scores versus what we've done here. Here we've identified an actual x value that represents a certain percentile um, or splits the distribution at a certain percentage.